Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evans, and I'm presenting this visual lecture called 23 and a Half Hours in Partnership with 24 Hour Fitness. It's great to be working with people who have a passion for helping others achieve their individual fitness goals and promoting positive change in their lives. So I have a big interest in preventive medicine, you know, which can mean a lot of things from, you know, cancer screening to eating more fiber to having a good social network. And I, I mean that in the old sense of the word. Uh, weighing less, drinking less, smoking less, controlling your blood pressure, cholesterol, and so on and so forth. So all these things are incredibly important, and I wouldn't want you to uh, minimize your efforts in any one category. But I, I want to know what comes first. What, what, what has the biggest impact? What has the biggest return on investment? What makes the biggest difference to your health? Um, so I did my research and I, I found an answer, at least for me, and it's tricky because, you know, all these things are sort of overlapping. Uh, but I picked out this intervention and because of its breadth, uh, it worked for so many different health problems. And that's what I found so cool about it. So just to kind of walk you through a quick list. So this intervention uh, in patients with knee arthritis who receive one hour of treatment three times a week reduced their rates of pain and disability by 47%. In older Patients, it reduced progression to dementia and Alzheimer's by uh, around 50%. For patients at high risk of diabetes and coupled with other lifestyle interventions, it reduced progression to frank diabetes by 58%. Following over 10,000 Harvard alumni for over 12 years, those that had the intervention had a 23% lower risk of death than those who didn't get the treatment. It's the number one treatment of fatigue. And of course, the kind of outcome of choice there, my favorite outcome is quality of life, which is really all of the above and, and really about making your life better. And this treatment has been shown over and over again to improve quality of life. So the question is, what's the, what's the medicine and, and what is 23 and a half hours? So the medicine was exercise, mostly walking, so not triathlons. And, and let me just put it a different way. I, I think what I'm... Um, asking you to do is if you think about your typical day so there's 24 hours and so you might spend most of your day you know this varies obviously but uh, you know couch surfing sitting at work obviously sleeping and what um, the evidence that I'm going to show you kind of tells me is the best thing you can do for your health is to spend half an hour being active maybe an hour and that uh, if you can do that you can realize all the benefits I've described in the previous slides so if exercise is a medicine what's a dose so when I think of, of, of dose I think of how long how often and how intense I'm going to give you a slightly mixed message but essentially uh, more activity is better but I must say the rate of return seems to decline after 20 or 30 minutes a day. So if you're being active less than 150 minutes a week or, or more if you're a kid, an hour a day if you're a kid, my flag goes up in the clinic. So my personal take on this is that um, you know the literature draws a very broad brush. Uh, and so we see big differences when somebody goes from not doing anything to doing something. And after that, the return is more granular. So if we took the nurse's health study, woman who went from zero activity to just one hour a week uh, reduced their heart disease rates by um, almost half. So you can break it down. So it can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes if you want to do uh, 30 minutes of exercise. So it can be broken into three. If you're only going to do it if it's pre-booked with friends, you know, I have couples that take a half hour walk every morning or evening to organize their life. A dog is a great uh, walking coach. Uh, the data is showing 67% of dog walkers achieve the 150 minutes a week just with the dog walking. And finally, of course, your commute, you know, getting off stop early, taking the stairs and so on and so forth. The next way to think about it is the reverse. So what I call sitting disease. We know that being sedentary is bad for your health, but uh, a researcher named Leonard Veerman uh, wanted to quantify this, and he did so down in Australia in a big study they did there. They found compared with persons who watch no TV, those that spend a lifetime average of six hours a day watching TV can expect to live about five years left. I mean, that's incredible. But then I think, oh, who watches six hours a day of TV? Uh, and it turns out the average adult in the USA spends about five hours a day uh, watching TV or screens. So I, th I, th I find this fascinating that um, we never think of the TV as uh, something that's bad for our health, but clearly it's as powerful as many other risk factors for chronic disease. So I'm going to finish by asking you a question. And this may have some personal challenges for you. So, you know, you might be very busy with work or kids or both, and you, or you may be uh, in pain or have other priorities. But... Um, um, my question to you is, can you limit your sitting and sleeping to just 23 and a half hours a day? So whether it's hitting the gym and attaining fitness goals or walking the dog or taking the stairs, get out there and be active. Thanks again to 24 Hour Fitness for bringing you this message.